Hello, everybody. Welcome to our online worship experience here with East Coast Christian Center. Thank you for being a part of this with us today. We get to do this together. I know we're across an internet connection, but what's awesome is that we're together in the spirit, gathered around Jesus, gathered around his name. And as we gather in his presence, he promises he's in our midst. I want to share this thought because we're going to sing to Jesus here in a second, but it says this in Colossians chapter one. It says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things that we can't see and the things we can see. He existed before anything else, and I love this, and he holds all creation together. You are his creation, we are his creation, and guess what, Jesus is holding us. Sometimes we might look through this pandemic season and think, man, I'm falling apart, it's all falling apart. He's got us, we sang it as children. He's got the whole world in his hands and he is strong and he is over all of it. And so today, let's lift up our praise, lift up our faith and lay down our lives before Jesus, the one who holds all creation together. Let's worship.
flame that shakes the mountain tops. The only word that breaks the curse is off. Your name, the one that covers all. It's higher than the others, higher than the others.
blessing, protection, provision, peace. It is so. We agree with you today, God. We place our faith in your promise above the problem. You have spoken and we trust your voice and we lean into it today. And I know that you're not done speaking. Wherever we're at today in this moment, I know that you want to continue to speak to our hearts. So Lord, may our hearts reply saying, yes, it is so. I believe it. You said it. That settles it. We thank you, Father, for the power of your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is not done speaking to you today. If you're watching this right now, we just want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us online to worship God and to listen. He's speaking. He is a speaking God. You know, when he speaks, he only speaks life. And today, I really believe he's got life for you. If you're here for your first time, we also want to welcome you. Thank you for tuning in with us. There's a web address right there. If you click that, fill out the connection card. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to know what we can pray for you about. And just make you a part of our family here as we gather as a church family online. Also, uh, we want to let you know there's a great message coming. And God's going to speak to us through his word now. So let's prepare our hearts for that. And may our hearts response be yes, God. Whatever you say, I'll do it. God bless you. Now let's get ready for the word. Hey, East Coast Christian Center, friends and family, uh, welcome to our service. I want to welcome the Parkway. I want to welcome our Vieira campus, the Avenue and the Coco campus. Can we put our hands together for those that are just involved right now, as well as our online digital campus. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, wow, what a hurricane weekend we had last weekend. I just want to say thank you to whoever prayed that hurricane off our coast. I, got a, I just got a small complaint, guys. Seriously, can we just pray it away a little sooner so we don't have to cancel church? Because if you didn't know, we are having church inside of our buildings as well as our digital online campus. And we're putting all the energy and all the strength into every area just like we always do. Uh, we're just excited about what God is doing in this new season. We are on our last message of signs of hope. We've been carrying on with messages of hope for the last few weeks, really over a month now, we've been sharing uh, hope-filled messages. You've heard from Wayne Francis, David Gammon, Dan Stalbaum, myself. You know, today you're gonna hear, we got a special treat. We're, you're gonna hear from some of our pastors at East Coast. They're gonna share some stories of hope. In fact, this message is called Stories of Hope. And I'm gonna read our first scripture today. That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse two. One of my favorite scriptures for this day and this season of our lives right now. And, and I think, I th and I hope I communicate this well, but basically we're gonna read this together. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I love that. And I want you to key in on two words here. And that is, he is the author and the finisher. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Would you pray with me right now as we just, we let God speak to us through this, this scripture today. Father, we thank you and we love you for your word. We pray that it changes our heart today. God, that you would boost our spirit with hope that we would shake off the, the rust and the dust and all the things that would try to come into our life to hold us down, but we would be lifted up today, right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, if you agree with that prayer, just say amen. 
Amen, right? Well, you know, I, I, one of my favorite things in life is an heirloom. I love heirlooms, especially from my grandparents. You know, I, I always grew up as a kid hearing stories about my grandparents. I love that. I, I love to hear my dad's stories and my mom's stories when they were kids and teenagers. But uh, one thing I really love about heirlooms, and this is probably, it's, it's one of my favorite ones, is this knife right here was my grandfather's knife. And this year, this knife turned 100 years old. My grandfather was born in 1910 and right around uh, 1920, yep, that was actually a year, uh, he got this knife in Boy Scouts. This knife right here, uh, he got about 10 years old and this knife survived the teenage years of my grandfather somehow. That's, that's a miracle in and of itself. In fact, it survived his 20s and then when my grandfather was in his 30s, he actually went and fought in World War II. This knife survived the Great Depression. This knife survived World War II. He actually left this knife in England where he met my grandmother. And uh, the knife is actually covered with tar. It's kind of hard to open because he used this knife to, to cut shingles for their roof. So he helped re-roof the house that my grandmother lived in. And he left this knife in England. This knife was left on another continent in Europe, made its way back to America, back to my grandfather's hands, and from my grandfather's hands to my father's hands, and from my father's hands to my hands. When I see this knife, I think of all the incredible stories I've, I've heard about my grandparents and about my parents. I, I think about my grandmother surviving the Great Depression as an Italian immigrant, you know, not having much in her life, and, and yet she made it through the, the Great Depression uh, to become a business owner. When my grandfather died at only 42 years old, she ended up owning a business, owning her own home outright in her early 40s, and helping uh, raise my, my mom and my aunt and ultimately being an incredible woman. I think about the stories of success in my grandparents and what that makes me do when I see this knife. It makes me think I can survive whatever I'm going through right now. Like if this knife could live through different people's hands for a hundred years, I think my story can go on. I think I have hope. It gives me hope. And just like this knife gives me hope, you know, when we, when we look unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith, that gives us hope too. And, and you may not have this great lineage that you know about of grandparents fighting in World War and all this stuff. You may not even know your family's heritage. In fact, I think if I was to be honest and look at the negative side of my family's story, it's full of many of the things that our lives are full of, you know, broken marriages and broken families and uh, cheating. And I mean, uh, we have we have family with half brothers we've never met before with addictions. And we, we've had anger and depression and selfishness. All these things have run through our family, just like your family, just like your family. But when we get our eyes off of all the broken things and we begin to tell the good stories, I think it gives us hope because what the, the, the case is like this, we're all going to experience negative things in our life. We're all going to have down times where if our life's a story, we're all going to have a chapter written in it that's difficult and hard. And God knows that. But he says that he is the author of our faith. Think about it like that. He's the author of your story. He's writing your story right now. And in fact, when we see the survival, not just of our family, but of, I would say, the family of God. Because we're described as, described as brothers and sisters in Christ. When we see the survival and the hope-filled stories of friends and, and Jesus and believers, and when we hear a story of a single mom make it through, of a family coming back together, of a marriage restored, you know, their story is actually our story, just as much as my grandfather's story is a part of my story. And that's the hope that we have in Christ, is that we're not living this life Alone, we're living it together like a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, helping us. And in fact, I'll say it like this. My story is your story. And your story is my story. We can glean and get hope off of each other's story. In fact, today we've got a special treat. We're going to hear from Pastor Mark, Pastor Marvin, and Pastor Keith. Some incredible stories of people from within our own church and our own community, and these are stories of hope. Psalms 111 verse 2 says this, Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. 
Great are God's works in you and in me. And when we can't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel in our lives, we can see it work out in the lives of others. Let's take a minute to hear from Pastor Mark, Pastor Marvin, and Pastor Keith, Stories of Hope. Thank you, Pastor Matt. I'll get straight into the story. Um, lately, uh, let me just say this. Lately, the big thing in the news that we've all been dealing with is all of the negativity, especially about financial things. And the message or the, the story I have today actually has to do with finances. But we're, we're here today, less, just this last week was about how that the gross domestic product was down 32%. All these businesses are going bankrupt and people are losing their jobs and all this stuff. And I get that. It's part of the world that we're living in. I believe it's time for us to have some good news and be able to see what God can do when you invite him into your life. Amen. All right, there you go. So here's what I want to share. A lady at our church named Jean, she just started with us last summer. She was a single mom struggling. She's got one kid, and she had one on the way. Matter of fact, she was, when she came, when she started with coming to our church, she was about eight months pregnant. And, she's, uh, and so I asked her first, I said, can I share your story? And she said, and I'll quote, yes, last year was an awful and amazing year at the same time. Share away. So here goes. She said, last year I needed baby stuff. I needed a car and a home because I was living on my sister's couch. My house had been foreclosed. My car was about to be repossessed. And I'd given away all my baby stuff for my first child. I went to ECCC, ECCC, and uh, some of the ladies there prayed for me, and within a few days, this happened. First, I got a car from my cousin for a thousand bucks. That's one. She said, I wound up with not one, but two baby showers. The biggest was from ladies at church who barely knew me, and I had so many gifts and doubles of things, I was able to bless other moms. Then I got into a program with North Brevard Charity through a friend. I moved into a transitional housing on July 12th, and my baby came on July 18th. Here's what happened. I got a three-bedroom, two-bath house through this NBC, and it was a lot of work because it needed repairs, but I had it fixed through friends at the church and in my family. In four weeks, I moved into a refurbished house on September 5th. Now, here's the thing. I pay only $676 a month, which includes my electricity and my water. I never went to church growing up. Without freedom, my church family and God, I have no clue where I would be. So here's the thing. She, she linked in. She had it with somebody. Um, I won't mention their names either because we're trying to keep people's anonymity, but the fact of the matter is that she had somebody who just said, hey, why don't you come over and visit us? She came to the church. She found out there were some people that actually loved her and cared for her, and then uh, over the course of time, she got LinkedIn. She went to Freedom, and she said it was the best thing I've ever done. This year, this is, her story's not done. This was last summer. Now, in March, she said, I started tithing regularly. Then I lost my job in May. That doesn't sound like good news. However, she said, I have not wanted for anything. All my bills are paid, and I've continued to tithe on my unemployment. And here's the thing. She's not in fear. She's not afraid. She's not scared. She's not um, whining or complaining. Instead, she says, I know God had my back before, and I'm believing for it again. I'm saving as much as I can, and I'm working on my credit to get a home of my own in the spring. God is so good. Now I'm believing for a house just like mine that is mine, Amen. not rented. Amen. I tell you, I am thrilled. I'm excited to see how God will move in our lives if we give him the chance. When we stop trying to do it on our own, we stop trying to use our skills, our thoughts, our ideas. I'll tell you, God has blessed me way more than than I ever could deserve, and he's blessed me uh, so much more than I, man, I'm not smart enough to have the blessing that I enjoy through my God, I'm telling you. And here's the thing, God's, is, this is what the Apostle John said, he said, God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but the, to save the world through him. Jesus did not come to beat us up. God's not standing up there like a, like a Zeus or something ready to throw lightning bolts at you when you mess up. Here's the thing. Jesus said, I will get into the mess with you. That's what he did for all of us. He jumped into our mess. 
joined us in it, and then as we begin this friendship, as we get this relationship, then the stuff gets cleaned up, the mess gets cleared away. We're healed, we're restored, we walk in strength and faith and power and authority because of what he's done. It's never be based on what we are and where we've been, what we've ever said, done, or accomplished. It's always him. That's good news. Amen. And it's hopeful news about a father we can trust no matter what. A savior who gladly joins us in our mess to help clean up the mess and lead us to a bright new future. Take it away, Keith. So amazing. Yeah, so my story involves the Prosser family. The Prossers are a great family. I know them more connected from their children, Sydney, Maddie, and Ethan, who go to TNT Youth Ministry, are great kids, and I've been able to do a lot of life with them over the years. Greg and Sarah, that's mom and dad, are connected at the Avenue Worship Center. They come regularly every Sunday, serve. They're around, right? June 26th, a little over a month ago, Greg and Sarah are getting ready for bed. They're sitting on the bed. And suddenly Greg starts having a hard time breathing. Sarah described it as somebody who's, who's gasping for air as if they're coming up out of the water like this. <gasps> Only there's no air going in. The next thing she knows, Greg's heart stops completely. He has cardiac arrest and he drops dead on their bed. She's shaking him. She's scared. She's calling up the, doc, or to the, the police, you know, the EMS, like, what do I do? What do I do? And the next second, all, all of a sudden, he just gasps and he's, he's awake. <sighs> and he's back. They go to sleep, they wake up the next morning, she's brushing her teeth, he's sitting on the bed, and the next thing starts happening, he has a hard time breathing. Before she realizes it, his whole body is pale, and he falls down on her bed, and he is dead. Cardiac arrest, completely out. She has to pull his dead weight off of the bed and onto the ground. It's frantic, screaming, and dogs barking, all of this. She calls up paramedics, they're on the phone, they're talking her through cardiopulmonary resuscitation. She is fighting for five minutes to put air into his lungs, to beat on his chest and get that heart working. This is a scary, horrible situation to be in. Five minutes of trying to, you're the only thing in between your husband's life and death. Paramedics show up, they get him to the hospital to Cape Canaveral. They're able to stabilize him, they intubate him, they sedate him, so they're basically putting him in a coma and putting air into his lungs. The next morning, Saturday morning, it happens again and his heart stops. Doctors and respiratory therapists have no idea what's happening in a 24-hour period, a man who is healthy, he's young, he's doing well, suddenly his heart gives out three times in a row for no rhyme or reason, no logical sense, it just happens. That's scary, that's real life, that's fear. Whenever on Thursday everything was normal, and Saturday morning my whole world's completely shaken and turned upside down, I saw Sarah, um, she was picking up Madison that following Wednesday from the church, and uh, you know, Sarah, we knew pastors and family and friends have been praying with the Prossers and, and encouraging them through this period. And I saw Sarah out front of the church, and I was talking to her, and I asked her a question that was pretty hard. It's, pretty, it's a pretty intense question when you're going through stuff like this, but I knew who Sarah was. I knew that she's a strong woman and faith-filled, and I asked her, I said, Sarah, did you think it was going to be easy? Did you think it was going to be easy changing the world and bringing heaven to earth? Did you think it would be easy saving lives and being on the forefront of ministry? And she shook her head no at me and realized what I was saying. You see, life and pain, these are indicators of something bigger underneath that is causing these problems. You can look at sickness and viruses and death and riots and hatred and racism. They are indicators of something deeper and bigger underneath. And sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, we like cookie-cutter, easy-bake oven lifestyles that are simple and easy and quick. But changing the world is not quick and easy. And bringing heaven to earth is not quick and easy. And there's an enemy, Satan, who is out to kill, steal, and destroy, and will do anything to destroy who God loves most, which is you and me. And so the day after I spoke with Sarah, Greg was extubated, meaning they put, pulled the, the tubes out of him. On Friday, he had, went under surgery and had a pacemaker put in. And on Saturday, he was discharged and was walking up and down the streets of his neighborhood <laughs> with his wife and neighbors saying, you are a walking miracle. And he is. And there's no rhyme or reason. There's no logical sense behind why doctors don't know why it happened and they don't know why it got fixed. But I can tell you right now, it's because there is an enemy who hates you and there is a God who loves you. 
Amen. And that Amen. is why you go through stuff like this, that there is pain in your life, but they are indicators, they are evidence of something underneath, which is an enemy out to kill, steal, and destroy. Sarah told me that the first two days of, of when this was happening, she felt defeated, had doubt and fear and anxiety. She wondered, Am I, did I do enough to resuscitate him in those five minutes? Is he going to wake up, if he wakes up at all, with brain damage? What's going to happen to my life, to our kids, to my husband, to our business, to our lifestyle, everything? All in 24 hours, everything changes. Right. But she woke up on Sunday with this fire inside of her with a new hope inside of her. Amen. She said, something changed in me, and I knew who God was and exactly what he was capable of. Amen. And we need that in us right now. When you're looking around at all of this stuff, you need to get, we need to get focused on the real enemy that we don't fight flesh and blood and know exactly who our God is and exactly what he's capable of because something powerful, a miracle, is on the other side of what you're going through. Amen, Pastor Keith. That's an incredible story. And my story of hope is about my friend Brian. Uh, and it's a little bit longer story. It goes back about three years uh, when my wife Angela and I first met Brian and Shannon. But first I want to share, when I asked for his permission to share his story, of course, he's an incredibly humble guy. He doesn't like having attention drawn to himself. And so I asked him, and this is what he said back to me. He said, it doesn't bother me as long as Jesus is magnified. Mm. Yeah. It's by his sacrifice that I am where I am today. And that is so true. And I love this. I love Brian's story because it's the story. It's, it's somewhat, there's some of it that's my story. There's some of it that's every, everyone can take a piece of this story. Um, and, and the result of it is something that everybody can experience. When, when we met Brian and Shannon, we were doing a freedom group. You mentioned freedom, Pastor Marvin. And I encourage you, if you haven't done freedom, you need to do it when we launch it again. It's life changing. And that's what Brian and Shannon would tell you is that when they joined our freedom group, they were coming from such a, from such a difficult place. Uh, they began to, to get into the freedom study and they began to uncover the riches of the grace of God and began to learn about the unmerited favor that Jesus has given to us through his sacrifice. And as they began to learn that, and they began to be vulnerable and share their story about what they had gone through. And Brian began to share about what alcohol had done in his life, uh, about how he had lost jobs because of alcohol. He, he, he understood what it, it felt like to go through a ruined marriage because of things like, because of addiction. And he understood what alcohol actually was doing to his body at the time that we were getting to know them. He was undergoing surgeries to repair the damage that alcohol had wreaked in his life, physically, emotionally, relationally, financially, all of those things that had happened. And, and he felt like, you know, at one point he was in a place where he was just lost and hopeless. But as he began to rediscover the grace of God and the, and the redemptive story of the cross, everything began to shift and to change. And as he and, uh, he and Shannon were together, they came to us and they said, you know what, we're pressing into the kingdom of God and we want to live righteously and holy before him. Would you marry us? And we got the opportunity to marry them, to stand right here in the Parkway Worship Center on a weekday with no one else around and just have a great moment with God marrying them and seeing them begin to shift and move forward. And, and then Brian went from, from just you know, being in a freedom group and, and he's doing that, but now they start to serve and they get connected to the dream team. And the transformation takes another level now because now he's serving on the dream team. He's connected to church. He's not just coming and sitting in a chair. He's actually tasting of the kingdom of God and taking hold of it. Right. And it's beginning to move in his life. And, and I would share with, our, I share with our host teams here in the Parkway on a regular basis. I say, whenever you serve in church, it should affect every area of your life. The kingdom of God is not bound. And when Amen. you begin to commit to serving and, and, and being a part of a faith community and really taking hold of it, it'll affect everything else that you do. That's, right. I, that's my story. Amen. And so he began to walk that out. And, and his story began to shift even more. He went from not having a job to getting connected to a business owner here at East Coast Christian Center and not only having a, a great job, but becoming a key employee in what turned out to be an essential business. And so when people are getting laid off throughout COVID-19, he's working more hours than ever. What an incredible blessing. Why? Because he was connected to the kingdom of God, because of the, the transformative work that was going on in his life. You know, he began, to, he began to take the next step of going to East Coast Christian University. He said, you know, I want to press in deeper. I want to understand my identity in Christ all the more, because I know that that is what's going to make the difference in my marriage and in this new direction that God is taking us. You know, and, and, and so now he and Shannon have the privilege of being able to sow into their granddaughter. 
as, as this, this young girl uh, has now the opportunity to be raised in a household and in a home where she's being ministered the gospel and she's being told who she is and she's being told that she's made in the image of an incredible God and the grace of God has an impact in their home and now it's being generational. So you went from a guy who, who couldn't keep a job and couldn't keep a marriage together to now he's married, he's raising a granddaughter in the kingdom of God, he's serving in the house of God, he's a key leader here at East Coast Christian Center. Brian's the kind of guy, and you guys both know him, that when we need something done, we can call Brian and it will get done, it'll get done well. He's, he's an, and so that's what the transformative work of God does in someone's life. And if Brian was standing here right now, he would be able to tell you that when he looks back at his life, he doesn't have to look back at it and be ashamed because he's learned that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He, and he understood... He he understands that 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so this story of hope is all about being able to identify who you are in Christ Jesus and let that transformational, restorative work take place in your life. And to come from a place of feeling like you're so far away to being right in the heart of the will of God. And it's not always easy. Pastor Keith, you talked about how, you know, when you're on the front lines, it's not easy. And you know what? They still face challenges and they still have trials that they have to undergo, but they know that they're undergoing them with the God of the universe on their side. And every single one of us under the sound of this message can understand that there is hope because there is a God who is on your side. He has done all of the work. The finished work of Jesus contains everything that you need. If you need it to succeed, you have it in him. You are designed to prosper and to have good success. And whatever you set your hand to is going to succeed because that is what the finished work of Jesus is here to do for you. So, man, as we tell these stories of hope, I'm going to kick it back over to Pastor Matt. Go out and encourage today because hope is alive. His name is Jesus. That's right. Hope is alive and his name is Jesus. You know, if we go back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, looking unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we know that faith is only alive because we have hope. Hope is the substance, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not Seeing hope is tied into faith. And, you know, when we look at Jesus, he restores our hope. You know, Jesus is writing your story with a hope-filled future. Let me say that again. Jesus is writing your story with a hope-filled future. In fact, when you come to the Lord and maybe a chapter of your life right now is, is looking kind of rough and you say, Jesus, my story is full of sin right now. You know what? God says this. I am writing a new chapter of forgiveness and of grace and of hope. When you, when you come to Jesus and you say, look, I, my chapter is full of hurt right now, God says, and he begins to write a chapter of healing and help just for you. When you come to Jesus and you say, my story, I, this chapter, Lord, I'm so lost in this time. I don't know what to do. Then God begins to write this chapter in your life of I once was lost, but now I'm found. You see, Jesus is not just the author of your story. He's also the finisher of your faith. You can have hope in Christ because even if you're dealing with tension and frustration and hurts and confusion, even to the point where you're, you're worried about finances or you're worried about your children, you've got to understand that God is a God of hope. The Holy Spirit leads us in the direction of of hope, and God writes your story with a hope-filled future. See, today is not the end. Just because you're down, you're not out. Just because you're struggling, it's not over. You've still got breath in your lungs. You can take one more step. And the Bible says, as you draw near to God, as you take a step towards God in faith, you know what he does? He draws near to you, he is not only the author of your story, he is the finisher. There's so much hope in that. Because if God is going to finish my story, he's going to do it in his strength, not in my strength. When I realize I don't have the wits, I don't have the emotional capacity, I don't have the strength, I don't have the energy to, to fix the problems in my life, you know who does? God. He's got all the joy. He's got all the energy. He created life itself. He created the atom, which creates fusion energy, nuclear energy. He created that with his words. God's got all the energy in the world. See, that's where the hope comes into play when we know it's not 
all on us. You know, Jesus said some interesting words on the cross. He said, it is finished. You know when your story was finished? It was on the cross of Christ. He finished your story. You see, your story is founded and it starts on faith. It's held up by hope, but it's lavished with love. The love of Jesus lavishes our life. He lifts us up with hope and he he builds a firm foundation on faith. And when Jesus says it's finished, he took all of your sin, all of your shame, all of your hurts, all of your anger, all of your addiction, all of your pride. He took it upon himself. In fact, right now, if you'd like to give your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to pray a simple prayer with me. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes and pray this prayer with me? Say, Jesus, I give my life to you. Please forgive me of my sins. I close the chapter on the old me, and I ask you to finish my story with your power and your love. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you gave your life to Christ in that moment, it's the best thing that you could have done. In fact, right now, if you're watching this, just go ahead and click that Uh, raise the hand button on our page right there or you text the number in or if you're watching this right now in one of our building locations I just want you to be bold enough to raise your hand and say you did that on the count of three come on one two three put your hand right up in the air and say you gave your life to Christ in that moment man let's celebrate for all the people that have given their life to Christ you know what's neat is every single week this year someone has given their life to Christ Someone has given their life to Christ. If, when we went on the internet, people gave their life to Christ. When we did digital campus, people gave their life to Christ. When we went back in buildings, people gave their life to Christ. Isn't that amazing? People are coming to Jesus right now. You're not alone. And we can celebrate together that you're in the family of God. You know, some great things happen when we are generous. Uh, in fact, when we are generous, we get to tell the story of Jesus to people who desperately need it. In fact, our generosity has been something so big to us during this time. This week alone, we partnered with Sonny's. Uh, we know somebody locally here, uh, the McNabb family. They own a bunch of Sonny's. And uh, they came to us one day and said, we've got a thousand meals, a thousand extra meals, and we don't want them to go to waste. Can you guys take these meals and get them out? And we said, okay. And in three hours, our team, our staff, our dream team got a thousand meals out into Brevard County. And I want to read you some of the places that people got these meals. Merritt Island High, Vieira High, Jefferson Middle, Satellin Elementary School, the City of Rockledge, their police department, the public work system, their waste management system, Rockledge Christian Academy, Vieira Hospital, Cape Canaveral Hospital, Rockledge Regional Hospital, and Bavard County Sheriff, Sheriff's Office in Cape Canaveral. We were able to partner with Sonny's and get a thousand meals out to people. And you might say, well, what's that do? That brings the message of hope into people's lives, and it let, lets them know that Jesus is alive. If you want to give in this season, you can give on the link that you see below, or you can text give to the number that you see below, or if you're in a, a facility or a building, you can give with an offering envelope. I, I encourage you to get the app, because where the app, what the app is, it's a way where everything is connected. You can give, and in fact, as I talk about being connected, you know, There are some incredible things coming up that you can get connected. I know some of you are, are concerned about going into buildings right now, but you might meet in an outdoor space. And in fact, we're having a baptism coming uh, real soon. All the information you see is right here. But this baptism service is going to be incredible. It isn't just baptizing people. We're going to have praise and worship. It's at Lori Wilson Park. We're going to have fellowship and prayer and community It's going to be awesome. And I know a lot of us have seen pictures in California of these revivals outside. You know what? We're having revival too. Every single day, people are coming to Christ. And we're going to go out to the beach right here and baptize people. You want revival. You don't have to look across the country or across the world. You can look right here in Bavard County, East Coast Christian Center, in your own church and your own community. Man, thank you so much for listening. Isn't God good? I just encourage you to go forward with hope. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Man, what an incredible message. 
We hope those stories of hope stirred up your faith as you continue to trust in Jesus. If you receive Jesus as your Savior today, we are so excited for you. That's the greatest decision of your life. Be sure to click the raise your hand button or text Jesus to the number on the screen so we can connect with you and help you find your next steps. You weren't made to do life alone. We want to remind you of a couple of events coming up here at East Coast. We're having a beach baptism service and live worship on Sunday, August 16th. If you've yet to be baptized, this is your next step as you continue to live a life changed by Christ. Beautiful You is also coming up on Friday, August 21st for middle and high school girls. We'll be adhering to CDC guidelines to make sure it is a safe night of food, fun, and free clothes. To stay connected and learn more about these events, download the East Coast app. It's free and it's a one-stop shop to keep up with everything at East Coast. Just search East Coast app in our app store on the mobile device. Thanks for joining us for service. We hope you have a great week. Now, enjoy this time of reflection with the Lord. Thank you.